How's it going everybody? Hope you're all doing well out there. I'm back working away in my basement today on my Home Assistant Automated Garden Rebuild where I'm completely revamping a control system that I had built a couple years back for this garden. And in this go around, I'm going to expand the grow space from one tent to like five. I am going to try and simplify everything and streamline the programming and clean up a lot of electronics junk and wiring mess and that kind of thing and just essentially improve on it in every way that I can. So this is the second video that I've made in this little series. The first one was kind of like an overview where I just went over the whole system, what the functionality will be, how I want it to work and what my plans are for it. But I want to start delving into the specifics of the system and I think the best place to start today would be to have a look at the grow room and some of the equipment that I'm using like the tents and the lights and the pumps and the reservoirs and all that kind of stuff before getting into the more complex electronics and programming and that kind of thing. So let's check it out. So rather than just one tent like the first system, I'm going to be growing in five different spaces this time. In the 4x6 that I have, I'm going to be top watering 3 gallon fabric pots with a cocoa perlite mix as my medium. I'm using a 3x3 flood table on the 4x4 side, that's 3x3 uh, internal dimensions, and a 2x4 external dimension flood table on the 2x4 side. One of these 102 liter Home Depot HDX reservoirs will feed both sides of this tent. I'm using half inch tubing to form a loop that spans across these two flood tables and off of this loop I'll have quarter inch tubes that attach to drip stakes that go into each of the pots. I'm going to use two per pot. The drains that I've got installed in each of the flood tables are three quarter inch. For pumps, I'm using a lot of these VivoSun 800 gallon per hour units in my build because they're the best value that I've found. These things are powerful and they last. I've used these over the past couple years with no issues. In each res, I've got a pump that's going to push solution out to the plants, and then another one that's going to sit inside and just stir the solution in the reservoir periodically. Both of these pumps will be on controllable outlets on one of these Tuya Wi-Fi power strips, and this will save me a little bit of electricity since it'll let me run the stir pump at intervals rather than 24-7. My plan is to do four peppers on the 4x4 side and two tomatoes on the 2x4 side. The tent itself is an old HLG branded tent that served me well but has since been discontinued. For lights in here, I'm running one of the brand new Viper Spectre KS 5000s in the 4x4. I actually just reviewed this light and it is a fantastic 4x4 light. It's got a massive footprint that spans pretty much the whole space and ample power and it puts up good PPFD numbers that are nice and even. And on the 2x4 side, I've got my favorite 2x4 light, the Chilled Growcraft X3 330, which is just a beautiful piece of equipment. This 5x5 space I have is where I do my PPFD testing for various lights, but I'm going to try and make use of this space for growing as well, otherwise it'd be kind of a waste since I'm not always testing. But to keep things portable so I can move my plants in and out and, and test uh, whenever I need to, I'm probably just going to do a single plant in here, and for that reason I'll start with a really small light like a Viper Spectra XS1500, something that's meant for like a 2x2. And then once the plant gets bigger, I'm going to run this absolutely ballin' horticulture lighting group Scorpion Diablo in here. I'm going to do flood and drain in a little tote in this space, and it's going to share a reservoir with the 2x4 tent that's beside it. In said 2x4, I'm using a Migro Array 4 Pro for my light, and this thing's looking after all my plants and seedlings as they get big enough to move into their own 3-gallon fabric pots and go live in the other tents. I've already got some trellising set up for the cucumbers that are going to grow in here. I'm doing flood and drain in here as well, and I haven't really tried flood and drain before with cocoa and perlite, so we'll see how it goes. I guess flood and drain can cause a salt buildup in the cocoa over time since the pot doesn't really get completely flushed each feed, but I think this can be mitigated by manually flushing them out periodically, and if it doesn't work out, I'll just switch over to the top feeding style like the 4x6 tent. This tent is a Vivo Sun tent, which is the brand that I usually use for grow tents. I've got another Vivo Sun tent beside this one. This is a 3x3, and I'm growing a zucchini in here, as you can see. I'm going to try and strap this plant to this chunk of PVC that I've got in here so I can try to get it to grow vertically rather than just have it sprawl out all over the bottom of the tent. These plants produce some big leaves and I'm hoping I can keep it organized and give it enough room by going straight up with it. I've got the PVC pipe held in place by burying it in the pot and then strapping it a ways up with a ratcheting rope hanger attached to the two tent poles. This is flood and drain in here as well, and I'm going to run a Viper Spectra KS3000 in here, which is the perfect fit for a 3x3. I'm actually working on a review for this light as well. Finally, for my NFT rack, I'm using some old Gen 2 Bridge Lux EB strips that I had on hand. Each shelf gets four of these strips on their own driver, and they function as their own little system. 
The four strips are hooked up together in parallel and run off of a Meanwell HLG 40H 20 volt driver. This lets me control the brightness on the shelves individually, which I might need if I'm doing different crops. The plan is to do leafy greens and strawberries in here. These PVC pipes are 4 inch. For now I just have a small pump to feed them with quarter inch line, but once I start getting the flow rate dialed in and tested, I may find that I need to go to a bigger pump if the output isn't cutting it. I'm using these Honeywell fans that everybody seems to love in each space to keep the air moving, and I've also got an AC Infinity Cloudline S6 or S4 for each tent to help me control the climate in each. I can easily get away with the S4 in the smaller tents since the fans aren't pulling through a carbon filter. If the house smells like cucumbers, I don't really think anybody's going to complain, but then again, I've never been overpowered by the smell of cucumbers, so we'll see. I'm running a single DIY humidifier for the whole space down here, and I'm going to try to keep everything happy with just this one unit. I considered running an individual humidifier in each space, but decided that would just be way too much work. The ultrasonic fogger I got for this humidifier is hilariously overpowered. I definitely went overkill on this one and would have done just fine getting one with half the discs or even less, but this one definitely works. I'll have to pulse this thing for like 5 seconds at a time. Well that's probably a good place to wrap this one up. I want to keep these short and concise so it's easier to get them out quickly and catch up to where I'm at with the system. In the coming videos, I intend to go over how I set Home Assistant up on my Raspberry Pi 4 with an SSD. I want to look at getting the power bars set up in Home Assistant with the V2 Tuya integration, building the PCBs and bringing all their data into Home Assistant via my absolute favorite add-on ESP Home, wiring up the sensors, and then of course programming the thing. People have been asking for diagrams and part numbers and code, and yes, I will be getting these together and sharing them in the pertinent videos, so hang tight. If you have any questions or comments or ideas or whatever, I'd love to see them in the comment section, and I do try to respond to as many as I can. Okay, until next time guys, take care and happy automating!